Hey everyone, welcome to another Hennigree tutorial. I'm Eric Stenmark, and in our last video we went over how to prepare our sequence for color. And at the end of it we made a flattened ProRes 422 HQ. In this video we're going to cover how to consolidate and transcode our footage so that we can hand off individual clips to our colorist. So the reason we'd want to do that is if we needed to make any adjustments to the edit after the color has been finished. Adding back in transitions, slipping clips, or swapping shots out altogether. So here we have our sequence as it was at the end of the last video. And this is our two color sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and come up to sequences and duplicate this again. We're going to call this consolidate. So I'll open this up and let's go ahead and close our other sequence. Now, because we're going to be consolidating, we need to pare this down as much as possible because it's going to reference everything that's in this sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out all of our titles, our overlays, our clean covers, and also all of our audio. Basically, I want to get this down to just the shots that we need colored. So once we have our sequence ready, let's go ahead and take a look at the Consolidate and Transcode window. So if we come up to File and go down to Project Manager, we can see we have our sequence selected and we have some options under this Consolidate and Transcode window. So we're going to be sourcing individual clips so that it'll reference each clip's individual resolution and frame rate. And we're going to go ahead and leave it on QuickTime, but we don't have very many options under the presets. So we have some GoPro presets, but those aren't very straightforward. And then we have Apple ProRes 422 LT and Apple ProRes 422. So we actually need to create our own preset for these because these two settings are 8-bit, which isn't going to give us enough, enough color depth for our color. So the way we do that, let's go ahead and hit cancel. And we're going to come over into Media Encoder. And we're going to create our own preset. So let's go ahead and come up here, create encoding preset. And once this window pops up, we're going to go ahead and call this ProRes 422HQ 16-bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to come under Format, go down to QuickTime, and let's go into our video panel. So we're going to select ProRes 422HQ, and we're going to click Match Source. So what this will do is it'll reference each clip's individual settings as far as the resolution, the frame rate, the field orders, aspect for the pixels. But here's where it's really important. We need to select Render at Maximum Depth and 16 bits per channel. And one other one, use Maximum Render Quality. So what these do is these give the colorist as much depth in the color from your original source media as possible. If we were to leave this on 8 bits per channel, we would get banding and any gradients, and it wouldn't be as pretty as it could be. We're going to leave audio alone, and we're not going to apply any effects. We're just going to concentrate on the video codec. So once we have this set up, we're going to click OK. And you can see it created a preset here. So once we have our preset ready, I'm going to go ahead and export it as well. And this allows us to put it in an easy to reference location. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on my desktop and click Save. Then we'll pop over back into Premiere, select our sequence, and come up to File, Project Manager. And here's where we need to import our preset. So I'm going to go and make sure I have my sequence selected, consolidating transcode, and I'm going to select Import Preset. I'm going to go back to my desktop, select Pros 422HQ 16bit.epr hit open, and you can see that it changed my preset setting here. So once I have that selected, let's go over some of the other settings. So we have our sequence selected, we've set up our consolidate and transcode settings, so now we need to go under options. We want to exclude unused clips because we don't want to include all of the footage from the project, we just want the clips that are in our timeline here. So I'm going to include 40 frames of handles, and we find that keeping it within a couple seconds of our frame rate gives us enough room for tracks and stabilization without ballooning our project too much. So if we're filming at 2398, we keep it between 40 and 60, but if we're filming at 2997, I keep it between 60 and 90. We're going to convert image sequences to clips, and if you have any time lapses, this is good so that instead of getting a ton of photos, they can get one consolidated movie file for that time lapse. We're not going to rename our media files to match the clip names because we want to know what the original file names were so that we can reference them back to you. And then convert After Effects compositions to clip. If you've done any composites, any sky replacements, or rotoing anything out, 
we want to have that as a clip and not the After Effects composition because in Resolve it doesn't come across as a composition. And we're going to preserve the alpha, so any transparencies. And we're going to go ahead and set our destination here. And for now, I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop and we'll call this Consolidated Media. We'll click Choose. So we can go ahead and calculate how much space this is going to take up. So once it's calculated the new size, we can see how much of a difference that's going to make. If we were to copy this project in all of its media, it would take about 55 gigabytes. But instead, because we're consolidating and transcoding, it's only going to take under 2 gigabytes. And that's a huge difference. So that means we can compress this down and send this via Dropbox really quickly without having to spend hours uploading and downloading. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. This operation requires the project to be saved. We're going to click Yes. And then it'll go through, analyze the project, and transcode all of the media. OK, so now that our consolidate and transcode is finished, what we need to do is go back into Finder, into our transcoded media folder. And we can see what it's done here is it's created a clip for every single shot in our sequence. And it's made these Pros 422HQ. So we're going to come in and find the Premiere project file. And we're going to open that in Premiere. We're going to close out of our other project. So we're going to go back into our sequence. We have our in and out points set. So I'm going to go up to File, Export, Final Cut Pro XML. So this XML will give the colorist all the information related to scaling, timings, where each clip goes in the sequence so that it, they can line it up with your reference video. So we're going to leave this name alone and call it to color and put it next to our consolidated media and hit save. We're going to get the translation report message, and we can go ahead and take a look at what that is. And all I expect to see is warp stabilizer. Yep. So basically what this is saying is the warp stabilizer won't be included in the XML, but it'll still tag it as such. So we're going to close out of that. So once we have our XML ready, we can go ahead and select both of these. This is our XML and our consolidated media. And instead of sending these by themselves, which Inside this folder could be a thousand different assets. What we're going to do is we're going to select both of them, right click, and go to compress two items. And what this will do is it'll create a zip file for us. And that way it's a single file to upload and send to our colorist instead of hundreds if not thousands of assets. So it just makes it a little bit easier to upload and download. Okay, so now that our zip is done compressing, we're going to go ahead and grab our XML file name, copy that, and rename our archive to match. And we're going to add today's date at the end. So that way we can upload this file to our service of choice, Dropbox, Google Drive, and FTP, and send that over to our colorist and they can go ahead and get started. Now if you have any questions about this process or you need some help getting ready for color, go ahead and reach out to Henniger. We'd be happy to help. And as always, like, share, subscribe, let us know what you think in the comments. See you in the next video.